Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about DNS enumeration and uh, zone transfers. Right now, for some reason, many people get confused when talking about DNS in general, more, more than actually talking about zone transfers and enumeration. So let me just put it into context. Let me narrow down the focus so it, start makes, it starts making sense. So let's take a simple scenario, one of which we are actually targeting a particular domain. And the domain we're going to be targeting in this case is going to be zone transfer.me. And what we're looking for here is we're looking for DNS records that could uh, help us lay out a, the structure, the digital infrastructure uh, of the particular target, uh, which is going to be zone transfer.me. So we're trying to look for important records that could reveal mail servers, subdomains, uh, hidden servers, uh, hidden mail servers, stuff like that. So we're looking for uh, additional resources linked or related to this particular domain. And the, the best way of, lay, uh, of actually getting uh, a, the layout of all of this infrastructure is through performing DNS enumeration. And then, of course, performing zone transfers if you have the ability to do that, because many people don't understand this. So let me explain what DNS enumeration is. So DNS enumeration is essentially the process of um, of querying DNS records for a particular domain, right? In this case, it's going to be zone transfer.me. And what you're looking for is various IP addresses, I've said, for mail servers, subdomains, etc. And then when we talk about zone transfers, this is a legitimate technique that is used by DNS uh, server admins, where you can actually copy the records from a primary name server to a secondary name server. It's a great way of uh, ensuring that you have, uh, you, 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 are, you have, um, what's it called? Um, it's a great way of ensuring that you have redundancy. Um, so when talking about how attackers can leverage zone transfers, this is usually a misconfiguration by the DNS uh, server admin where they, uh, they, they are not able to successfully secure this or to prevent zone, zone transfers to unauthorized servers. So attackers leverage this and are able to copy the records from the primary name server to an unauthorized uh, server where they actually get uh, the entire uh, infrastructure and layout of all the IP addresses, domains, mail server, so on and so forth. So you can see how important this is in building a profile of your target and what areas might be the most um, the most fruitful to target first. Now, as I said, we're going to be using zone transfer.me. Now, this is a domain or a service that has been set up specifically to teach you about zone transfers and the valuable information that you can get from DNS. Um, so you can go through this. I'll be referencing this um, I'll be referencing this uh, this blog post or this project uh, in various parts of the video, but my main objective is to show you how this works uh, and how it works with two different sites. And then, of course, I'll be taking you through all the tools that you can use to perform as much enumeration as possible when it comes down to DNS. All right, so let's get started with the first tool, which is going to be the host tool. All right, so the host tool is a utility that's built into most Linux distributions. So if I say, what is host? That tells us this is a DNS lookup utility. And we can perform a simple lookup on uh, zone transfer. Sorry, that is zone transfer dot me. And we hit enter. All right, so let's see what information this has given us. So first of all, it tells us that zone transfer dot me has an IPv4 address of 5.196, so on and so forth. It then gives us the various mail servers, which is very helpful. It actually tells us, hey, what email service are these individuals using or this organization using? In this case, you can see it's using Google Mail, which definitely points towards um, G Suite or Gmail or something to that effect. And then, of course, we have the priority, which again uh, tells us what email uh, servers are have a higher priority than the other. So that helps you build an, a, a profile of, of the company and what is important over the others, right? Now, this doesn't give us all the information. Like, for example, you can see we're not getting the name, uh, the, the name servers, both primary and secondary name servers, which are, are pretty important if we want to leverage uh, DNS, you know, for information gathering. So the way to do this is to specify the type, which is going to be T, and then we specify NS, which stands for name servers, and we type in the site, right? So zone transfer dot me, and we hit enter, and it tells us the primary name server is NSZTM1. Dot digi ninja and then we have the secondary one which is nszdm2.diginninja so we can utilize these two name servers to perform the zone transfer however let's talk about the host tool we'll then talk about dns enum and dig right those are pretty much the popular the most popular tools that you can use 
Um, so again, I can specify whatever records I'm interested in. So I can specify a records and I say zone transfer dot me hit enter and it tells me the address, the IPv4 address that's able to get right. And again, I can change this to MX. So I can pretty much play around with exactly what records I'm looking for. Um, but let's talk about another tool now. Let's talk about uh, dig. I want to talk about dig first. Now dig is referenced here quite, uh, quite well, but let's talk about uh, just general uh, information gathering first. So if I say dig, um, well, let's, let's say what is dig, right? So dig is a DNS lookup utility, fairly simple. So if I type in dig and I say zone, zone transfer dot me, that tells us, hey, zone transfer dot me, mm, sorry, that is zine transfer, apologies for that. Uh, let me just clear that out. And we take a look at zone transfer dot me. So there we are, it tells us it gives us the record, uh, one record, which is the IPv4 address and nothing more. So again, you really need to fine tune what you're looking for. So if we go back to the help options, which um, we can think we can actually access here. So zone transfer, uh, zone, well, we can actually use dig, but um, so I'll say dig help and um, Let's look for the option where we can specify the type. So we can specify the query type. So again, if I'm looking for the name service, I can say, um, so I say dig, uh, the type is going to be NS. And then I say zone transfer dot me and I hit enter. And as you can see now, it gives us the type. So again, it gives us the, uh, the name service, both primary and secondary. And again, we can specify the, the type off record we're looking for. But let's talk about the uh, performing the zone transfer now. So a zone transfer, as I said, is the copying of uh, the record set from a primary or a secondary name server to an unauthorized uh, name server. In this case, it's going to be us. What will happen is we'll get that record or we'll get all the records and we'll be able to see the underlying infrastructure here. So again, to do that, we say dig AXFR and then we specify the website domain uh, dot me and then we specify the the primary or secondary DNS uh, the, the, uh, the primary secondary name server and then we, we use the at symbol and of course we specify the primary name server and we hit enter all right and we're going to give that a few seconds and there we are all right so you can see that in case of the primary name server we have various new records that we weren't able to enumerate before we had all of them we had all of these publicly available ones uh, and these were all related to zone transfer dot me directly. So we have the txt record, which is uh, Google site verification, which means this is uh, this particular domain has Google site verification enabled. We have some hardware info. In this case, it's telling us it's running a Casio FX 700 G Windows XP. That's highly unlikely because that's a calculator. And again, yeah, this gives you an idea of various records. So hardware info, it's not really giving us much information because this site was test to was set up to teach you about DNS. Um, you then have, uh, you then have the, uh, the mail service, which we, which we took a look at already. And then we have uh, various, uh, website, uh, authentication, um, uh, records added in, in the form of TXT records. And then we have server authority. Um, and then let's see some interesting ones. We have some subdomains. Yes. We have ASF DB auth DNS, those on, those on transfer dot me. And that's an A record, I believe. No, that's not really an A record, that's AFSDB. Um, uh, so that's a DB record, we have an A record here. Um, so there we are, that, that's the one we're talking about. And that's uh, pointing towards localhost. We have a cranberra office.zonetransfer.me, that is a subdomain that's pointing to an IP address. However, these IP addresses are probably internal, which means if we try and access this domain, we'll really not be able to access it publicly. So if I try and access that now, Let's see if we'll be able to get anything. Yeah, so these are probably internal um, internal domains and internal IP addresses. And then we have various TXT records, so on and so forth. You get the idea. So this is this was for the first um, the first uh, the the primary name server. When talking about the uh, well, we have, we have, we actually have a good example of a C name here. So we have an alias uh, for staging zone transfer me. Let's see if that's currently active. This again looks like an internal domain. So we paste and go. Yeah, there we are. So you can see 
uh, it looks like there's an issue with CloudFront, um, but it's really not resolving. I, I don't think that's working anymore, but you, you, you really learn a lot by using zonetransfer.me. So let's try this, the secondary um, name server. Let's see whether we have any more information. We'll, we'll hit two and um, yeah, it's pretty much the same information. So nothing new. Um, so this is uh, how to do, uh, how to perform zone transfer with dig. Now let's talk a lot about DNS enum, right? So DNS enum is pretty much the standard because it automates this entire process. So we say D DNS enum and we say zone, um, zone transfer dot me. And by the way, um, uh, DNS enum does this automatically. It performs the zone transfer automatically. So if we hit enter, you can see it's going to go through all the information here and um, we'll wait for it to load up all the data. So there we are. So it gives us the, the host address, which is IPv4, uh, the name servers, the mail servers in a really, really great way because it sorts out all the information. It then performs the zone transfer on the secondary name server. It gives us the records that we're able to get with dig and then it performs it on the primary name server. And then after that, it starts performing uh, brute forcing, which I want to get to in the next video where we'll be talking about DNS map and other tools. Um, so yeah, that's how to use DNS enum. It's a very, very simple tool. Um, let me think of other tools that we can use. Uh, we've used host. Uh, we looked at how to get specific records. We've also used dig. Um, uh, I don't want to use DNS map now because we don't want to perform brute forcing, but that's also quite, uh, quite useful. Um, and let's talk about uh, what's the tool called Fierce. Yeah, so Fierce is a tool that I don't think many people use a lot nowadays. Um, so, so let's just try and use it. Um, so if I say, what is fierce? And uh, so it doesn't give us any more, any more information. So fierce, uh, I think you have to specify DNS, say zone, zone transfer dot me, and we hit enter. And again, it performs the, it performs it all automatically. Um, so again, it gives us our primary and secondary name, name servers. Um, the various records it was able to get from the primary name server performing a zone transfer. And we get pretty much the same information we would get from either using uh, DNS enum or dig. So it's really up to you uh, regarding the tool you want to use. Um, and then let's take a look at another example, which is going to be my personal blog. And let's see what information we get from this. So if I say dig hsploit.com, you can see it tells us where we, we have two, um, two IP addresses, which again, doesn't give us more uh, any information regarding what the underlying infrastructure is. So if we say we want to look for the name servers, ah, there we are. So it tells us we have uh, that this site is utilizing Cloudflare, which means uh, getting the an accurate uh, IP for the main domain is going to be difficult or really, uh, it's, it's since it's going through a proxy, the traffic is being proxied through the Cloudflare DNS. It's going to be really difficult getting the exact servers uh, unless they've been exposed on various other uh, on various other services like um, like Netcraft uh, and many other services I've taken a look at uh, in the past. So if we try and perform a zone transfer, it will fail. Uh, and uh, what I want to cover in the next video will shed some light on, on why DNS is so important, especially when talking about DNS brute forcing since we're in active information gathering. So that's pretty much all that I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, let me know if you have any comments or questions and I'll, I'll be happy to answer them. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace, guys.